Nobody goes home at night and says, honey, let's get stressed out. What exactly is the impact of stress on multiple sclerosis? Can stress trigger an attack? Can stress worsen disability progression? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. If you or someone that you love is impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you haven't, ring that notifications bell so that you'll be alerted of all my upcoming content. In today's video, we're going to be discussing stress. And the question is commonly posed, how does stress impact multiple sclerosis? If you listen in clinic, you would think that stress has a major impact on MS symptoms, relapses, and disability. But if you look at the medical literature or talk to neurologists, you'll oftentimes hear the exact opposite, that stress has no role. Uh, today, I'm going to be reviewing a really awesome article written by some colleagues of mine, which delve into this question of the relationship between stress and MS. Let's jump in. The article we'll be reviewing today is entitled Associations Among Stressors Across the Lifespan, Disability, and Relapses in Adults with Multiple Sclerosis. This was published in the Journal of Brain and Behavior. First author is Pollock. I want to give a shout out to the third author, Tiffany Braley, who was a resident with me at University of Michigan quite some time ago. This is a fresh article. It just hit the presses at the beginning of this month, May 3rd, 2023. Now, before we get into the findings of the study, let's define a stressor. A stressor is any life event or circumstances that causes the individual to experience stress. This can be darn near anything. It can be an illness. It could be a fire, God forbid. It could be a divorce. It could be financial worries. It could be a traffic accident. There are lots of opportunities to experience stressors in day-to-day -day life. The researchers administered a survey to 80,000 people impacted by MS from October to November of 2021. In the survey, they had people complete a form called the STRAIN form, which stands for Stress and Adversity Inventory. They also had people complete a PDDS, or Patient Determined Disease Step, which assesses the degree of disability that that person with MS may be experiencing. They also had a host of questions surrounding relapses, specifically looking at the severity of the relapses. And they collected all this information. Now, when they were all said and done, they had 771 people that had completed these forms in a way that they could then do a statistical analysis. And what they looked at was the relationship between stressors and disability and stressors in relapse severity. They took it a step further and they looked at stressors before the age of 18 and then stressors after the age of 18. I would submit to you that this study is arguably one of the best conducted studies looking at stress, as previous studies in my mind didn't delve deep enough into the kinds of stress, the severity of stress, nor did they do a good job of assessing disability or relapses. So I think these guys were really set up for success. Hey, don't stress out, but before we go on, do me a favor. If you found some value in this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and help push it out so more people can benefit. Thank you! When considering the relationship between stress and disability, there was a very significant relationship. If you look at the degree and severity of stressors before the age of 18, that correlated with, with a worsening disability. Also, if you looked at the degree of stress of people over the age of 18, it also correlated with the degree of disability. This is one of the first studies I've seen which mirrors my experience in clinic, which is when people have super, super stressed out lives, they don't fare as well and their MS seems to progress faster. And that's what this data really supported. The researchers then did a similar comparison looking at relapses in stress. And whereas there was an association amongst people with MS under the age 18, it didn't hold water when they applied the statistics. When they looked at people over the age of 18, there was a positive correlation. Again, they found amongst adults with MS that increased stress correlated with a more severe MS relapse. Again, this makes perfect sense as to what I have seen in clinic over the last two decades. 
Now, at this point, you may be asking yourself, so what? Duh, we already know that, Aaron. Well, someone living with MS or someone whose loved one has MS, they may know that when they get stressed out, they tend to do worse. They may be aware of that sort of a, almost as a self-evident phenomenon. The reason that I'm really excited about this article is that now the scientific literature supports that claim. Before, doctors would say, nah, -uh, which doesn't make sense. And so I'm really delighted to be able to point at some really solid research, which does support the idea that if you have a more stressed out life, that can have a negative impact on your disease process. The second reason that I love this article is because what they're finding is actionable. So we can't cut stress out of your life, but we sure as heck can learn to manage stress. And all human beings benefit from learning how to manage stress. People impacted by MS have an additional benefit to learning how to manage their stress, because as per this article, it should help decrease their disease activity. And that's a really big deal. For those of you that follow the channel, you know that I want you to be five for five in your fight against MS. Those are five things that I know about that can slow the disease down. One of those five is mindfulness. Mindfulness, which I define as being in the present moment without prejudice. Doing something in the present moment without worrying about what's gonna happen in the future or lamenting about something that bad happened in the past. Mindfulness is an awesome sauce way of learning to manage stress. It's one of many ways that I want you to cultivate a lifestyle which helps you manage stress to the best of your ability. If you would like to learn ways of doing that, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, this is Aaron Boster saying, let's manage our stress, be safe, and take care.